Hello and welcome to E4N's D2C Revolution. Today, we are in conversation with Bharat Bhalla, the co-founder of U Food Labs. Hi Bharat, how are you doing? Good, good. Thank you for having me. How do you, how do you feel being here? Very nice. I feel very good uh, to actually be a part of the series that you're doing. So, Great. excited. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I would love to dive right in. How did the idea of this business come up? What is the gap in the market that you noticed? Sure. So, I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing at Food Foods. You is essentially uh, reimagining the concept of packaged foods, right? When I say that, what I mean by that is you're using absolutely simple, real ingredients that are 100% natural uh, in the packaged food format, right? Which is come, something which is completely unheard of. Uh, so, you're making packaged food as close as possible to freshly prepared food. All of this while still retaining the convenience of packaged food, right? So this is essentially the overall concept with which we, uh, our vision and how we conceptualize you. So if you actually look at globally what's happening in the packaged food space, there's a lot of chatter now about packaged food actually being dead food. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So dead food is nothing but chemically processed food that doesn't have any nutritional value, mm -hmm. right? So uh, if you look globally, there's a lot of chatter around the fact that packaged food is actually dead food and it's not really good to consume. Um, what we're doing at Food is essentially starting a fresh food movement to make packaged foods alive again. So this is the simple principle with which we, with which Varun and I co-founded uh, New Foods. Uh, okay. So to make uh, packaged food as close as possible to freshly prepared food using uh, no artificial ingredients, using only natural substances. We do that largely through two things. One is uh, making the food chef crafted. So the entire food is not really prepared in the lab. It's actually prepared by chefs who've only worked in uh, restaurants or uh, home kitchens um, throughout their careers. And uh, we couple that with a very advanced food science technology, uh, which is called lyophilization. Okay. So essentially what we do is we, we freeze the food that we prepare freshly uh, and then we dry it out. Um, so this is something which is very unique. So an entire principle is based off of this. So we're allowed, so what happens is you're you're able to preserve the nutritional value of the food because you're not giving direct heat to the yeah. food, and and more importantly, the taste, aroma, and texture of the food remains intact. So what you're essentially doing is why we say reimagining packaged food is we're we're kind of giving a consumer mm. food that is as close as possible to freshly prepared food. Yet in a packaged food format that has a shelf life of 12 months at room temperature. Wow. So this is what we have conceptualized at you okay. uh, over the last say three years, one year in research and, and two years in, in operation. Great. And uh, I believe Hardik Pandya invested and is also the brand ambassador of the brand. That is correct. Yeah. What what does he bring to the table for the brand? So Hardik, uh, you know, came on board in April of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, me and my co-founder were. Uh, we're doing a lot of uh, thinking around if, does it merit to actually get a brand ambassador so early on uh, you know in a, in a journey of a brand because as you know uh, one thing is to sign a brand ambassador and the second thing is to spend the marketing dollar around it yeah uh, but from a top of the funnel perspective if you actually look at it uh, hardik is somebody you know view food essentially is a challenger brand mm -hmm. what we're doing at you is challenging the status quo trying to see uh, how we can do things completely differently uh, in a market that has always been dominated by the larger packaged food players, larger yeah. conglomerates. So we're, we're essentially a challenger brand and that is exactly what Hardwick is as well, right? So he's come from, uh, he's somebody who came from very limited resources, uh, you know, when he was coming up the ranks. And uh, today he's, he's the vice captain of the Indian cricket team. Uh, he's somebody who is a youth icon, somebody that people look up to. Yeah. Uh, and, and what better than a sports person actually endorsing the fact that uh, packaged foods can now be healthier for people. It can be better for you. Uh, so from a from an overall awareness perspective, the fact that he's a youth icon, I think he brings a lot of value uh, to the table. And he, you know, when we connected with him, uh, we were initially talking about just a, a brand endorsement deal. But when he tasted our products, he realized that there is so much more yeah. that can be done. Uh, you know, to promote this for the youth of this country and and in general mm -hmm. that he said that he wanted to be a part of, of this so he's he's in fact come on board as not just a brand ambassador but in fact an equity investor so very very uh you know very invested in the brand and uh, very keenly follows uh 
the marketing activities that we do uh, would add to it. Great. And uh, recently, I was invited to one of your uh, Delhi airport campaigns, which happened a huge branding on uh, that happened on the plane. Uh, what was that campaign all about? I would love for you to detail me speak about it. <laughs> sure. So uh, you know, we when we signed Hardik in April, like I said, we did our first made in campaign. Uh, during the course of the IPL, that was our first campaign, which revolved around purely product. Mm-hmm. It was about Hardik, uh, you know, being a part of you and really talking about new foods, not uh, being a food where you're not compromising, okay. uh, you know, with regards to your health, quality, uh, convenience, all of those aspects. Right. Uh, to take the campaign further, uh, you know, we've come back with our new com- campaign, which is Rise and Conquer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is it is a theme uh, built around the World Cup, um, you know, where we are wishing uh, Hardik all the best for the World Cup, uh, India all the best for the World Cup. So as a part of this, uh, you know, and there are so many campaigns out there. Uh, there are so many brands that are actually launching campaigns during ICC, and for a young brand like ours to stand out is often difficult. Yeah. Um, so we've uh, always believed in thinking outside the box as far as our marketing activities are concerned. Um, so we, we are an Omni channel brand. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're available in stores, we're available online, we're also uh, available in two airlines. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we thought that what better to do, you know, to break our campaign than to actually brand a plane. So the, the team at SpiceJet was very kind and we worked with them to, to really put together this entire uh, aircraft wrap. So the entire yeah. plane of SpiceJet is actually branded U Foods uh, with with the theme of the campaign, which is Rise and Conquer. So, so you were part of that particular unveil as well. So this is this is uh, actually monumental for us, for being a two-year-old brand to, to actually do something where we are put on a plane. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that too at a, such an opportune time where we're wishing Team India all the best. Yeah. Uh, you probably saw the aircraft wrap and it's, it's, it's painted in the Indian colors uh, with Hardik right there, yeah. uh, wishing uh, you know, them all the best. So the entire kind of campaign is built around this. So this was uh, pretty much how we opened the campaign. But mm. this theme now goes across uh, spice jet planes, uh, as well as uh, offline stores, all our uh, online apps as well. So you know we have this theme running across the full forty-five days of the World Cup. So interesting. Great. Sounds good. Uh, we've done a lot about the brand. I would love to speak from the consumer perspective now. Uh, today, if I have to, I'll be very honest. Today, if I have to try a new noodle, uh, which I find on either Zepto or Blinkit or any of the quick commerce e-commerce channels, I will be a little hesitant because my taste buds are very accustomed to the ones which are age-old brands that I've been having since sure. my childhood. So, uh, and that is all around. So, Indians are not very open to trying new things. They're very uh, adaptive to the taste that they have been uh, habitual of. Yes. How difficult was it for you to launch a noodle brand and then get the Indian taste bud to get adapted to it? We're not just a noodle brand. Yeah. So uh, what we've done, uh, I think we've been smart about this. We've always invented around categories and innovated around categories. So mm. for it, I'll give you an example. When we, when we before entering the cup noodle space, uh, we were pretty much the first brand that did pasta in a cup format. Right? Mm. Uh, the reason for that, we know that the market for pasta is smaller than that of noodles, but we were the only one, and we're still the only ones that uh, you know, have pasta in a cup format. Okay. So that really differentiated us in the mind of an end consumer. So you're not creating a new product. Okay. Um, when we then launched our noodles, about nine months after we did our cup pastas, uh, we were already a an established brand, I would say, uh, to a large extent, at mm. least in the minds of consumers, who were consuming our uh, pasta. Right. Okay. So at least uh, we had the mind space of people in the ready to uh, eat or the instant food category at that point. Um, and I think that helped us. That helped us. That and if you look at us, we are probably the only D two C brand uh, when we started out that has managed to really disrupt the cup noodle category. Because before us, there were really just uh, you know two really legacy brands that have dominated this market forever. Yeah. Um, and and a lot of people have tried. Uh, interestingly, a lot of people have tried, but they've not been able to penetrate that particular market for a new brand like ours to do that mm. uh, you know we've, we've actually been very fortunate yeah. uh, and, and consumers have liked the concept uh, so whenever we do something it's 
we always believe in differentiating our product. Mm. So our differentiation was that if a let's say a noodle is soup and it comes to uh, a cup format, ours would be sauce because okay. that's how Indians enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. So so that is in itself is a differentiation in mm. terms of the taste and the texture of the food. Having said that, the goodness of the product is already there. So I think that obviously followed through from the pastas and the other products that we did. So I, I think at some level it's it's about how you're bringing products to the market and kind of innovating around categories to, to sort of uh, get into the minds of people and get the right mind share. Correct. Okay. Quite makes sense. Uh, also, if you see, there are a lot of new players in the market. Yes. Uh, small, big, medium. I personally have seen a lot of rise in the Korean uh, noodle market growing because of the K-dramas and everything. Everybody wants to go towards the ramen yes. and the uh, thukpa side of the market. So, uh, what different do you bring to the table when the market is getting so cluttered these days with this kind of an option? So, if you look at us and you look at uh, the way we are building these foods, good food is essentially trying to build a brand that is authentic transparent and brings kind of a trust in the minds of a consumer. So this is essentially what we want to build, right? So whether we're building, let's say a noodle category or a pasta category, even beverages for that, uh, for that matter, it's all about you being a trustworthy brand in the minds of a consumer. Uh, in a category, if you look at packaged foods as a category, it's infamous, mm. right? And the reason why I say that it's infamous is because of the quality of ingredients that go into packaged foods in general. Okay. So this goes across categories, across players, uh, and, and there is a sort of trust deficit that exists in this particular category amongst mm. consumers. Uh, because for very many years, uh, you know, a lot of people call out something and it's actually not that. For it, I'll give you, I can give you examples. For example, no, if you say whole wheat noodles, Right. So yeah. everybody talks about whole wheat noodles or whole, or whole wheat bread. Yeah. Right. If you look at the back of a pack, it's actually say Something 40% whole yeah. wheat and the mm -hmm. rest is maida. Yeah. Right. With us, you don't get that. Right. We are authentic. We use simple ingredients and we believe that and we're open to any kind of food. Right. As you food, we believe the consumer cannot be fooled. Right. And there is merit in us giving what we are saying. Mm -hmm. Right, I just feel like at some level there is still a lack of trust, and we are trying to bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. uh, at U Foods, U Foods is not about a noodle uh, company or a pasta company. I feel it's it's a vision much broader than that. Right? Mm -hmm. So we started off with noodles and pastas. The office got beverages now, uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's the idea is very simple. How can you make uh, packaged food with simple ingredients such that there is a lot of goodness in uh, the aspects of better for you that come, mm. right? For an end consumer. Right. I just feel like India and the world is coming to a point where they need uh, to bridge this trust deficit. And, and I think uh, we're right there. Yeah. Uh, we're innovating for this new India to really kind of push this, this vision forward. Great. Uh, one tough question now that you may or may not like. <laughs> Before coming for this interview, I had put up a story, a poll on my Instagram saying that how many have you, how many of you have tasted your foods? And if yes, uh, what is the price of the taste? So you'll be surprised to know that there was a 75 is to 25 uh, sort of a divide of people saying that 25 of them have tasted it and 75% have not tasted it yet. So, uh, and these are all Gen Z and millennial kids, mostly situated in Delhi and Sure. So, uh, what do you think about the reach of and the availability of your product? And why do you think that after two years, still 75% of people, I'm just taking an example. So I have around 1500 to 2000 followers. So you can guess about how many responses I have. Sure. So 25% have not, have tasted it, sorry, and 75% have not. So what yes. is your take on that? I look at it as a huge opportunity. Uh, you know, to be honest, uh, you're talking about Delhi NCR. Let me give you some numbers, right? So if you look at, uh, and you mentioned apps like Gimkit or, or Zepco, yeah. uh, you know, today, uh, a short span of say 12 or 1 since on these particular applications were already a 20 odd percent, maybe even a 30 percent in some cases market share uh, of, yeah. of the kind of some of the categories that we operate in. So if you're saying that we're only known to about 
25% of the people and this is the kind of response that we are getting uh, i think it's it's quite hard mm. uh, I, i think it's uh, i think distribution takes time uh, yeah. brands are not built with the time um, i'd like to know how the 25% of people that yeah. actually so yeah i i did get comments so most of them said that uh, it's very indian taste friendly it's very different and it's nice so i i did get positive comments so yeah, yeah. so yeah so that i take that as as good yeah. see food can never be 100% right yeah. uh, everybody stays but the different the way we look at it if you please say 80% of the people i think you're doing a good job right. uh, so i i think that at some level this is a huge opportunity right uh, delhi and cr being our home if you're saying 25% of the folks know about it that itself say uh, is actually a good number mm. the way i see it yeah. uh, we have to build from here uh, i think this is not something that we're going to do overnight and say okay 100% of the folks know about it yeah. i think it's a huge opportunity uh, in terms of distribution i think it's just a matter of time yeah. uh, we're a we're an omni channel brand so we're uh, available across uh, online offline uh, yeah. we even get into exports now so i think from a awareness it's a matter of time uh, what's important is you're you're getting general customer acceptance as a global brand yeah uh, in a category that is not really seen anybody more in the last uh, i don't know how many years correct so i think that is where uh, that is a big takeaway for us as okay. i look at it i i like how you find the silver lining in every situation which is very no important. it is right yeah, yeah it, is, it is it is i think if i were that. at your place i would have also seen that way that if the 25% of them are happy then of course it makes sense for the business to grow further and make more people happy in the taste yes as an entrepreneur you have to do that yeah <laughs> <laughs> makes sense okay and uh, how do you think are you marketing the brand to in order to kind of challenge the age old brands which have a great marketing presence in india so i think if you look at uh, like i said youtube is a better for you so everything that we do uh, at youtube is about you know creating a sort of, sort of awareness uh, as far as the end user is concerned hmm. right so all our marketing activities revolve around that so to make the consumer more aware to make uh, you know people more conscious about what they are putting inside their bodies i think this is where so our marketing efforts is actually something that is benefiting them it's more educational in that sense right so now i think that is uh, the principal platform now how we do that can be two or three different things the first aspect being uh, you know working with with say college students with, with the younger population of this yeah. country you know young working professionals to various programs that we are now running uh, at you to make people more aware about the brand okay. i think that's that's one very big aspect we are very passionate about you know getting the younger consumers more aware mm. uh, you know inculcating that uh you know uh, sense into them that there now exists an option where they can choose better and choose wisely i think that's very important uh from a top of the funnel perspective we obviously have hardik uh, to drive awareness amongst uh, you know people mm. i think that's the other aspect uh, which helps us and uh, the third aspect which i touched upon is that we're not necessarily competing with age old brands directly uh the way i see it is product innovation plays a huge role in the way we are going about it right so uh again a simple example if you're looking at the half hour candy right uh today one of our best seller products in, the, in this particular uh, category is our whole wheat yeah. right which is 100% whole wheat by the way yeah there's nobody who does who really does that right so it's actually 100% whole wheat it's 100% whole wheat right? how does the taste then uh match with that of maida because because it's like people don't accept health. so there's a thing that ki healthy tasty nahi hota so is it that way well what kind of feedback have you received from that so you know uh, very interesting yeah, i'm i'm glad you say that because i'm not a fan of whole wheat same right <laughs> because because uh, of the bite right mm. so is that if you look at whole wheat maybe when you taste it it's a hard bite yeah right we understand that so one of the things uh, we took a lot of Mm. to to really see how we can get this right and make it uh, as close as possible to foods that people uh, you know foods that you and I enjoy yeah right uh, and i think that was key. so mm. it took us 6 months uh, to get the texture of the whole wheat to this right okay uh, and like i said i am not a consumer of whole wheat noodles today i only consume that those particular things, okay right mm. so your biggest problem uh, as a consumer of whole wheat is the fact that I'm assuming it's a hard bite. Yeah. Right. That's that's yeah, what yeah, most yeah. people have. Right. So we we kind of tailored with the texture of the whole 
bandwidth and and the thickness of the movies to ensure that they are ready now. Okay. Uh, it's as soft as Meta movies, if not better. Uh, so working around categories, working around product innovation, right, to build larger categories. I think this is where we come. In. Uh, I think we've learned that to do something which is exactly similar and do a movie product uh, is harder, mm. right? Uh, so I think that there is merit in innovating around categories and really building this up. So this is what we follow uh, mm. the company and everything that you see around us uh, revolves around that. Makes sense. And what is your media mix like? Uh, how much percent of it goes into print or edge digital kind of articles and TV? For us, we're a young brand. Mm. We're still evolving. Right. Uh, this is really our uh, second campaign because mm. something like this comes into play when you're actually doing your campaigns. Uh, so, on a regular basis, a lot of our spend uh, is is actually directed more on digital. Mm. Uh, because e-commerce, I think, uh, yes, between yeah. e-commerce, e-commerce, yeah. offline retail, uh, I think a lot of the spend goes there mm. uh, because we believe that you know to drive awareness, uh, that is to drive product awareness and differentiation online is great. Mm-hmm. So, so from that perspective, on an ongoing basis, you see a lot of us spend that particular. Uh, About how much in percent in case in case of India? So, see, if you actually look at our current campaign, our current campaign would be far more diversified. Okay. Right? So, with, with the onset of uh, rise and conquer as a campaign, uh, we've made a conscious choice of splitting it between, uh, say, OH, mm-hmm. uh, and I classify the airplane branding also in OH. Of course, OH. yes. Uh, so that. Between that, uh, between offline and then a lot being on uh, Hotstar because mm. uh, YouTube is now going to be visible on uh, Hotstar during the post World Cup as well. Yeah. So it's a, I would say it's almost like an equal split between OH uh, digital mm. uh, and uh, offline. Offline is probably uh, almost there, say about twenty odd percent, and okay. the rest is split between OH and uh, digital. Uh, and I'm including Hotstar and YouTube. Great, of course. Okay. Makes sense. I think it's pretty good in terms of share about if, if in case you're a two, three year old brand, it's pretty nice according to that because yeah. most of the D2C brands which are out there for about 10 to 12 years also don't have that good uh, divide among all the channels. The problem with D2C brands today is that they focus too much on digital because they feel that's the only place where they need to excel. So For us, we've, we've you know, been very clear from the outside. Mm-hmm. We're a omni channel brand. So yeah. we're available today in 6,500 channels. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so a lot of our spend also goes towards uh, offline, and I think at some level that you see brands digital first as a strategy is great for people, uh, and it's worked great for some people. But I think the real challenge really comes in when you're building offline in this country. I think okay. that's where the real game. Is. Yeah. Um, and and we've also learned the hard way in the last two years. Mm. Uh, but the great thing is that we actually have acceptance acceptance today across. Value retail, modern trade, general trade, yeah. uh, and to be in six thousand five hundred stores yeah. uh, is in itself a test for a, for a, for a brand. Correct. So that's why the spend and what you see today is, is kind of uh, you know a good mix between digital and offline. And right. Yes. Also, uh, at the top of your mind, if you're supposed to list top three consumer trends that you've noticed change because you're a brand that launched post the pandemic, I'm sure you must have seen a lot of uh, consumer behavior changes happen. Yes. What are the top three in your category according to you? If you look at packaged foods overall, I think uh, there are two or three very interesting things that I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first aspect is humanization of products. Uh, yeah. Consumers today want to try uh, new products. Consumers today are uh, you know, at some level bored of uh, trying the same thing again and again. So, there's a lot of awareness that is out there, so mm. people are open to experimenting. Yeah. Uh, so I think that has given the ability for a lot of brands to come in, mm. uh, especially with a younger population of this. I think that's definitely something that is working. So there is a certain kind of premiumization. Um, while while people are willing to pay more, uh, we feel that you know brands. At least in the food category, to price it more than say 20, 25 percent is yeah. is hard because then you're just catering to a very different and a very niche audience. Yeah. You're only catering to India A, which is a huge market by itself in India. But I yeah. think it's just India A. Uh, for us, um, the way we look at it is uh, we want to cater to a wide variety, mm. uh, and, and I feel that 
uh, if you want to build something better for you, it has to be uh, you know something that is a bit more horizontal. Yeah. Uh, so I think definitely premiumization is one aspect. One thing that is emerging, but I'd like to see a lot more of it, and and I think India will kind of adopt this is quality of ingredients and the quality of the labels, mm-hmm. right? So uh, we've spoken enough about this, but uh, people being more conscious about what they're consuming, whether it's in terms of the quality of ingredients, whether it's um, in terms of reading the labels that, that are there behind uh, the back of the pack, mm-hmm. and really understanding what it means. Yeah, I think that's where uh, awareness will really kick in. Yeah, uh, I, I can bet. That you know, if a consumer today looks at the back of back of anything, they'll be shocked yeah. to really see what what is what all goes uh, inside some of these particular products. Sure. So I think we, I'd like to see a lot more awareness mm. that kind of uh, kicks in over the next uh, few years. Mm. I really hope that happens. And then third aspect that I feel that is going to happen is uh, in a lot of ways I feel like the trend for uh, Indian brands to grow to go global. Is really going to emerge in the next two years. Uh, I think we've seen that with IT and IT services uh, over, the, over the last, say, 15, 20 odd years. They were yeah. the first ones out of the gate. Uh, but I really feel that Indian brands today, with manufacturing problems, uh, with all the incentives that the government is really putting uh, mm. around PLI, I just feel like there is going to be uh, a very big opportunity for brands to expand uh, globally. So yeah. uh, for them to actually be quality brands and gain acceptance across uh, you know, markets outside India, mm-hmm. uh, I just feel like that that trend uh, is waiting to come. So I think consumer companies will be the next ones out of gate to really kind of uh, yeah. push the envelope as far as uh, you know exports is concerned, which is great for uh, our theme because our theme yeah. has always been making India for the world. We believed in that from day one, so yeah. we catered to about. Uh, Five different export markets outside of India okay. already. Which uh, are those? So we're in South Africa. Okay. Uh, we're we're in two thousand stores across South Africa already. Uh, so okay. lot of it, and the great thing is, uh, the product has been accepted not just it's not just catering to Indians abroad, but uh, a wide variety of uh, you know ethnic diversities across that particular market. Oh. So so that is that has been very heartening. Yeah. Uh, so they love our butter chicken noodles over there. Oh really? Yes, it's a <laughs> wow. Butter chicken noodles is is something that uh, we've been surprised. In fact, yeah. we we made the product for South Africa first and then introduced it in India. We okay. well in India also, but uh, imagine that you know something like this is so popular. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah. that Africans are liking the butter they chicken taste. They love it. They <laughs> love it. Okay. They love it. Not just Africans, people the world over. In yeah. fact, if you actually look at it, uh, our theme yeah. really revolves around taking a lot of the Indian goodness. Spices and flavors, packaging in a format that is very convenient for consumers and distributing the world. Right, that is what you refer yeah. to with Korean food. Right? Yeah, that, yeah. So why can't Indian companies really do that yeah. globally? Uh, so that's what we believe in. So yes, we are in South Africa, uh, we're in Singapore already. Uh, Australia is, as a market that is something that we've just entered, mm-hmm. right? And uh, in US and UK, we do some work with Amazon. Okay. Uh, so there, we are available mainly online with Walmart and Amazon. Uh, and we're just starting our entry into the GCC region okay. uh, with Dubai uh, in the digital market. Again, really positioning ourselves not just as an Indian brand uh, or catering to only Indians abroad. Yeah. We are an Indian brand, of course, but uh, catering to a more global population yeah. uh, abroad. I think that's where the real brand will be created. Okay. So, so I think that's yeah, very impressive. Some nice. of the things that, that will emerge. Okay. Um, one small question. And I want a one-liner off the top answer to this very quick. What one tip would you have given yourself as a younger entrepreneur that you wish you had? Been? I think to start earlier. Okay. Uh, I think uh, I think uh, me and my co-founder we've been investment bankers for about uh, fifteen years okay. before we really took the entrepreneurial plunge late in our thirties. <laughs> but it's very satisfying. Hmm. I think it's at some level uh, it is very satisfying. So uh, I think. India should produce a lot more entrepreneurs going forward. This is the wave uh, of entrepreneurship over the next decade in India. Yeah. India is going to see a lot more brands, uh, a lot more entrepreneurs at the head to drive this going forward. So definitely start start early. Uh, I'd been much, much more fortunate had I started out 10 years ago. Uh, yeah. but never, too late. Yes, <laughs> never too late. Yes, never too late. 
Yes. Okay, last question. Your growth and future plans for 2024. I think there's there's a lot that we that we want to do. Uh, mm. we, we, you know, uh, I think a lot of this is based on the kind of innovation that we're seeing across uh, products that we're launching, categories that we're launching. So we, we started off with largely uh, instant foods as a category. Uh, if you see, so these pastas went to the ready to cook with the Hakan noodles, uh, which has seen a uh, great amount of uh, acceptance in a very short span of time. We mm. now have uh, we recently launched beverages mm. uh, with our coconut water. Uh, again, uh, again, something that has got a lot of acceptance mm. from consumers. So, really pushing this uh, in terms of categories, in terms of the kind of products that we bring to the market across these particular categories yeah. is what we see uh, in terms of product innovation and distribution. Obviously, will grow uh, as we kind of keep moving forward. Exports, like I said, is going to be a huge market for us. Um, and so, so I think between domestic and uh, international, we we like to sort of pretty much see more products coming to the uh, for uh, and uh, really innovating and innovating some of these very unique products. Great! I think uh, we've bothered you enough with a lot of questions. No more to do. <laughs> I, why don't we try some of the coconut water? Oh, yes. I think I've it's something that we've just launched. Okay. So uh, I I give very honest opinions. You so. should. You <laughs> so. should. It help us. I'm not sure how to open this. I don't want to spill it in the sofa. Let me open it. No, no, no. Here you go. I don't want to. The sofa is too pretty to spoil. Here you go. See, I made it difficult for you. I even peeled off the. I do this for a living. So this is... <laughs> oh, yeah. How much sugar does it have? It does not have a lot of sugar, I guess. There's no added sugar. There's no added sugar. There's no added sugar. And okay. I'd want you to just actually read the ingredients. Yeah, that's why I was reading it. It just says coconut water. It's it's legit coconut. one word. <laughs> it just says it's coconut. really very natural and nice. Yeah. So it's uh if you see, no preservatives. Actually the smell is also very natural. It is. So we've tried yeah. to ensure and this is pretty much the only uh water in the market that is Yeah. Natural. I've had one or two others. I would not like to take the name, but then they are so sweet that they don't taste like coconut yes, so, water. So both, I think, from a sweetness perspective, and the yeah. second aspect is, um, you know, the preservatives aspect of this. So it gives us that metallic taste. Yeah. Um, with us, I think we can kind of going back to the same philosophy. How do you make this? Like, if I were to give this to you in just a glass, you should not be able to tell that oh, this is a bottle or a. Oh yeah. That, I think that's whether it's our noodles, whether it's our coconut water. So this is the principal kind of factor driving this. Thing. Okay. Wow, makes sense. Okay, people, I think it's good time to wrap up the conversation as we enjoy our coconut water. Please stay tuned to D to C Revolution as we bring more co-founders on our stage. And that's Bharat Bhalla signing you. off, and Thank that's Nehitkar signing off. Thank, Thank you so much.